Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, my friends, we are diving back into Call of Duty Warzone. This is probably one of the most highly requested videos that I've gotten over the past few months. Uh, really, ever since the Cold War integration took place, everyone's been asking, Zach, can you rank every single weapon in the game once again? Uh, if you remember back during Modern Warfare and Warzone, we went ahead, we ranked all the weapons back then. Uh, I was like, what, 50 or so weapons? I wanna say like in between 50 and 60. Now though, we're sitting around 90. We've got a ton of weapons to break down, rifles, SMGs, LMGs, snipers, pistols, you name it. So uh, we've got a tier list today. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump into that, rank every single gun we've currently got in the game, every single weapon, I should say. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. Let's go for 4,000 likes on this one. Definitely a very, very big video in general. And of course, if you're new to the channel, uh, we are always covering the latest news, intel updates, setups, pretty much everything going on in COD. It's all right here. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. Also, if you want to eventually see me do a best loadout or a best class setup for every weapon in the game, uh, just let me know by dropping a like or dropping a comment on this video. I know I've gotten quite a few requests for that one as well. But for the time being, uh, let's jump into the tier list. All right, so we're on the tier maker site. I've gone ahead, I've, uh, I've made all these images for all the weapons in the game, like 90 or so. Uh, let's just jump right in. As far as the actual classifications go, I've got top or meta, obviously, this is gonna be the best weapons in the entire game. I've got competitive, which is a pretty good weapon, but maybe not like best of the best. I've got viable, which is pretty much just like average, I would say. We've got below average. We've got niche, so it's not really a weapon that you would use to like win a tournament, let's say, or drop a ton of kills, but it's decent in its own unique way, I guess. And then we've got garbage, which uh, that'll be home to a few select weapons here in just a few moments. But uh, starting off, we've got the majority of the pistols here. And I would say most of these are somewhere in like the viable or below average mark. You're not really using pistols a ton in Warzone unless you're getting like the ground loot or obviously off the rip as you're jumping out of the plane. So pretty much all these I would classify in the same place. I mean, Magnum, I would, I don't really know, like viable below average somewhere in here. Uh, we'll start with below average for now just because they're not really super popular on most loadouts. That said, I would say the Daimati is uh, honestly maybe even in competitive still. Uh, if you're using a secondary, if you really want a pistol, I would choose the Daimati as like the best of the best. Uh, but 1911, uh, we'll have that one in average. We'll just spread them out across here for the pistols. Runetti, below average. 357, below average. X16, same. Deagle, definitely not it. Same deal. Riot Shield, I'm not going to put in garbage despite it not being really that useful. I'm going to put it in niche just because if you know what you're doing with this, it can actually be decently useful, especially if you're in duos, trios, quads. If you have teammates, you can cause a pretty nice distraction by using a riot shield and sort of uh, bait enemies into focusing on you. And that way your teammates can get like just super easy kills uh, off of that fact. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put that one in niche. Uh, for whatever reason, we've got the Tundra here. I don't think that was all the pistols, but the Tundra, is it top meta? I don't think it's top meta necessarily yet just because it is a tad bit slower than some of the Modern Warfare snipers and obviously uh, you don't have the uh, the super ideal optics. Precision is like the best one you can get, I think it's called, and even that one's not great. But I'm gonna go ahead, drop this one in competitive. I love the Tundra personally, but I know it's not for everybody. And I don't think it's quite to the point where it's top tier meta yet. Uh, the knife, I'm gonna go with niche and that would sort of also classify for like the Cali sticks. Uh, the sledgehammer, basically any of the knife variants as well. I didn't uh, like go ahead and put all these in there just because we uh, we just rinse and repeat the same answer for every single one of the knife variants, but I'd say that one's in niche as well. The Pellington, personally, I'm not a very big fan of. Uh, it can have like decent velocity, decent damage if you kit it out right. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this one in viable or average. M82, I'm not a fan of. I know some people like this one. I wouldn't necessarily call it garbage because it is a one-shot headshot. I'm gonna say below average for this one, uh, primarily because it's slow. It's kind of awkward to use in certain situations. Like this is by no means an aggressive sniper like the car or the SPR. And like I said, I'm just not a fan. This is more so biased because I don't really like the gun that much, but below average, I feel like is a decent place for it. Uh, HDR, I would say is viable. Same deal with the AX50. Both uh, really good snipers, just basic snipers at the end of the day. Uh, they're great for what they're supposed to do. We know how I feel about the Dragunov. If you've been on the channel for quite some time, I despise this weapon. I hate it in Modern Warfare multiplayer. In Warzone, I'd rather have the Gulag Rock, if I'm being honest with you. This one stays in garbage. Incredibly biased opinion here, but frankly, uh, I don't even think it's that usable in, in most situations. Its damage really isn't anything to write home about. It's slow, it's awkward, not a good gun whatsoever. Never use it, just, just stay far away from it at the end of the day. The Ride Tech, I'm almost in the same boat with, honestly. I'm not a big fan of the Ride Tech either. Again, a very, very slow sniper. It has its uses though. I think for that reason, I'm gonna put it in niche because you can have the explosive rounds and that can actually be decent against cars or helos and stuff like that. So I don't think it's incredibly useless like the Dragunov, let's say. 
I'm, I, th I think niche is a, is a good spot for that one. The SPR, I'm going to say competitive. Personally, I do prefer the car, and that's a little bit of foreshadow as to where that one's going to land. Uh, but it's a great sniper, great marksman rifle. Uh, one shot, headshot, really good velocity. You really can't go wrong with that one. The car is definitely top tier meta. I mean, this is one of the most popular weapons in the game. If you look at any like the Warzone ranked uh, site stats, the car is like one of the top five weapons most used. Uh, so everyone's using this. It's obviously a fantastic sniper. One shot, headshot, super agile. I feel like definitely deserves a spot in the uh, in the top category there. The crossbow's niche. Personally, I can't stand it. I hate the fact that it takes five seconds to reload. But if you can hit your shots with it, I mean, it's not bad. Um, I wouldn't put it below average because I don't think it, it really belongs in that category compared to the other weapons we've got in there. Niche, I feel like, is a good spot for that. Uh, MK2 Carbine, it's honestly kind of close to garbage. It gets a lot of hit markers in Warzone, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between below average and garbage. I like it more than the Dragunov, though. I might put it below average. That one might change. We'll see what else lands in below average uh, as we go through the list. But, um, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a tough one. The Sigma. Not really a big fan of this one. It's a launcher. It's not entirely useless. I mean, you can use it against uh, vehicles, obviously. You can... If you get a ground loot, I mean, you, you got a chance of getting some kills. But... Is it below average? Like, I would take any pistol over this. I think for that reason, I gotta put it in garbage, right? Like, I'm taking any of these pistols, maybe except for the 50 GS, over a launcher any day of the week. EBR, I'm gonna say, uh, viable average. It used to be really good. It was busted at one point with like the whole one-shot headshot. Now, though, it's just like a decent marksman rifle. Really, you can't go wrong with it. It's not, it's not too bad, but it's also, like, not top meta, I would say. SKS, I feel like, falls in the same boat as well. The AUG, the Cold War AUG. We already know where this one is going, man. I love this gun. The AUG is insanely, insanely good right now. Here's the thing, though. I feel like the AUG is by far like a top weapon in the game. The M16 is up there, but I feel like the AUG is better than it to a certain extent. Uh, faster TTK, the velocity is insane. The M16 has the range factor and the, and the uh, recoil and spread factor, but I don't know if I want to put the M16 top tier meta right now or just competitive because I do feel like day in and day out, the AUG is better I'm gonna go, I guess I'll go top tier for now. That is another one that might change. I might drop that one down to competitive. Uh, we'll see as we go on. DMR right now, it's competitive. I mean, it's it's certainly still usable. It's nowhere near where it was at the start of season one. Um, but if you're hitting your shots with the DMR, it's it's still up there. I'm gonna throw that one in competitive. Personally, I hate the gun uh, just because the meta ruined it for me when it was the king of Warzone. I despise the weapon now. Um, but it, it's still usable for sure. The Type 63, not so much. I put that in the average. I threw like the EBR and the SKS. Uh, getting into the LMGs now is primarily what we've got going on. The M60 is really slow. I'm putting that one below average. It just, it feels like you're carrying 200 pounds of rocks in your backpack. Not it. You're just never going to be able to move with this thing. The Stoner is definitely competitive. I wouldn't put it super top just because, again, pretty slow because it is an LMG. But this thing hits like a truck. It's definitely usable in this current meta. Uh, RPD, I feel like, could be in the same boat, but I don't see it being used that much. The ground loot's not bad of it. I'm going to go viable on this one. Um, I do think the stoner is a better LMG, and I, I don't feel like they belong in the same category necessarily. If we had even more uh, different brackets in between competitive and, and viable, maybe like above average, that's probably where the RPD would fall. The Holger, viable, average, it's not bad. Pretty mobile for an LMG. Uh, we do have another launcher here. Uh, I would, RPG's not awful again, but it's gotta be, it's, you're not using the launcher, right? Like, I don't feel like it belongs in below average because, again, given the opportunity, I'd pick up most of these weapons before I'd pick up an RPG. You don't have ammo, it's only usable in very specific situations. It could almost fall in niche, actually. Sigma's staying down, Sigma's too slow. Uh, but RPG could be in niche, I guess. SA87, viable. I can't put it in competitive, but it's also not below average, so I feel like that's a pretty good fit for it there. MG34 has an insane TTK, but it's also super slow. It has such a bad reload. Below average or viable here? This is another tough choice. I'm going to say below average. Again, for the for the slow speed, the super slow reload, even with side of hand, it's not great. Um, the recoil is not bad, though. And like I said, the TTK is insane, but it's not a weapon I'd really recommend. The fin, it's average. Uh, really, really good recoil control. It's an absolute laser beam. Thing almost has no recoil as is. You could use the adverse barrels and make it like the whole chainsaw thing. It's great for close range. Then Viable's a good spot for that one. PKM, I don't know if it's top meta anymore. Just because of the meta that we have now is a lot more dominant towards uh, faster weapons. But it's competitive for sure. PKM, arguably, is still the best LMG in the game between its lack of recoil. It's really, really good damage. It's really good range. It's honestly not even that slow either. Competitive, I feel like, is a pretty solid place for that. M91 is viable. 
the Bruin is definitely still competitive. People have sort of wrote it off uh, ever since it was nerfed a couple months back, but the thing is still super good. I would maybe even have it as a top 10 weapon in the game. Uh, its range is phenomenal. The damage drop off is not really severe, so it's certainly competitive in the current meta. The Gallo and a lot of the shotguns coming up here, I would say they're viable. I mean, the Gallo, if you're looking at a shotgun, if you're trying to use a shotgun secondary, um, the Gallo is probably the best one in the game right now. The R90 really isn't it anymore. Uh, none of the other shotguns are super competitive, like Street Sweeper. I'm going to say below average because it takes 19 years to reload it. You got like, what, 16, 18 shots, but the second you have to reload, the gun becomes awful. It becomes unusable, not worth running. Uh, the Hauer is inconsistent as can be. Sometimes you get one shot with it. Other times it takes four hit markers. Not a fan. The VOK Rogue was at one point pretty solid when it was like the whole fire shotgun meta and the R9O was going around. People tried the VOK Rogue as an alternative, but uh, now I don't really think it's that great. I'm gonna go below average. It could probably sit in viable or average though too. Uh, we've got the M79 in here. I wouldn't really even put this one in niche. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be that good or that usable for anything. It's sitting in the garbage tier. Um, like most of the other launchers probably will. 725 below average still. You're not going to do anything with two shots unless you get super lucky on double headshots. The Origin, I could say viable average. It's got the ammo. Uh, it's got the spam ability, if that's a word. So I don't think it's uh, below average per se. R90, probably still viable as well. Uh, unfortunately, the fire shotgun meta, it, it's still lingering in the background. It's nowhere near where it once was, but it's uh, it, you're still going to be able to do well with it if you really try. Model 680, below average, super inconsistent, just like the Howard. Not a fan of either of those. The Jack-12 I've seen pop up a bit more recently. I've seen this on a few loadouts in-game. It always just destroys me. I push a building and suddenly the guy is spamming 25 shots at me. Um, kind of slow. I, it could be it could be average, though, or viable. Uh, we now get some of the SMGs. AK-74U has really good velocity. It, it's viable. It's definitely viable. Not competitive. Not below average. There's definitely, uh, you know, worse SMGs than that. Like, for instance, the Milano. Garbage. I never get aim assist with the Milano. Specifically, if I drop Superstore, get a ground loot, never any aim assist. Uh, the thing's got a terrible TTK. Just not it. I wouldn't, I don't think I've even actually tried using this as a loadout weapon just because it's not good enough. So it's sitting in garbage tier for me. The LC-10 is not a bad weapon. It's viable. I mean, it's got some decent range, no recoil. The damage is all right too. Very comparable to the Bullfrog, which I'm sure we're going to get to here in a moment. Uh, but yeah, not a bad SMG at all, but not competitive either. KSP is below average. I might even take it over the Milano, though. Uh, it's got a bit more range than the Milano. The burst factor on it, though, is not going to really help it in any situation. So below average, I feel like, is decent there. MAC-10, of course, this is a top meta weapon. Best SMG in the game right now. Uh, I'd expect it's going to eventually get nerfed just so people start using other weapons. Typically, uh, what they do is if they notice people using the same weapon too much, that's when they start to look at nerfs for it. For instance, the Kilo uh, towards, like, what, the end of Season 6 when it got its nerf. Everyone was using it, so, of course, they got to try and diversify a bit here. But, I mean, we still have a decent amount of weapons left. But looking at this so far, obviously, there's a lot of weapons that are usable. There's just some that are better than others. Uh, the Strela, honestly... This one's, the, out of all the launchers, the Strela is the one that I'd take the most just because it's got that insane velocity. Like, that rocket travel time is uh, way faster than everything else. Below average, maybe niche. It's not garbage. It's definitely not as bad as the Sigma or the uh, M90, uh, M79, rather. But it's obviously not going to be up here at all, so we'll go below average for that one. The Cold War MP5, it's viable. I don't think it's competitive just because the Modern Warfare MP5 is better, and I wouldn't have them in the same bracket because... 10 out of 10 times, I'm taking the Modern Warfare MP5. Better recoil control, uh, better mobility. It's just a better SMG comparing those two. The Bullfrog is definitely competitive. Kind of slept on, I think. But right now, as far as the ground loot goes for Season 2, I want the Bullfrog. Every time I drop Super, if I can get the Bullfrog, I'm feeling confident. You get like 50 shots. It hits pretty good. It's super fast. Like, this is a great SMG. Uh, I, like I said, though, I think it's slept on. I think most people deviate towards the MAC-10. They sort of uh, lean towards that one. But Bullfrog is definitely, uh, it's a sleeper choice. I like it a lot. The Fennec and ISO are so similar. Basically, the Fennec is like the ISO's big brother. Everything the ISO does, the Fennec can do better. Um, so I'd probably put Fennec in viable and ISO in below average. Neither of them hit super hard unless you're very, very close range. They don't really have any velocity, though, so you can't use this at any kind of range. So I feel like that's a, that's a justified placement there. The MP7 used to be so good. I love the MP7. Back like the MP7 car meta was so fun, but I think it's fallen off as of late. I don't really think it's competitive anymore because I mean like these guns are definitely going to uh, end up outgunning it in most situations. The Bullfrog I would take over the MP7, so it'll sit in viable for now. The Modern Warfare Augs probably in the same place. Pretty good weapon, pretty good TTK, honestly, uh, both with the 9mm rounds and also with the 5.56 conversion, but uh, it is a bit slower if you're using the 5.56. 
and it doesn't have a ton of range for using the nine mils. So viable again, feel like it's a justified place. The striker I'm not a fan of. It just, it's slow firing for an SMG. It's got some decent range, but it's damage isn't really anything to write home about. Not really a fan of that one. The Uzi, I'm gonna say below average too, just because it doesn't have enough ammo. In solos, I'd put it viable um, because the 32 round or 42 round AE rounds, whatever they are, um, that's what you have to use on the Uzi to make it not garbage. But only in solos is it super viable. You can't wipe squads with the Uzi without having the pain of reloading, backing out of the fight, re-engaging. So not really a weapon that I'd recommend either. Uh, P90, not competitive, uh, viable again. This category is probably gonna be the fullest by the time we're done with this list. And these are all usable weapons. If I'm finding one of these off of a random loadout, if I die, uh, come back from the ghoulie and we end up squad wiping and I have to take a loadout weapon from somebody else and it's one of these, I'm not complaining. There are obviously better weapons, but you could do something with any of these. 1911, I feel like doesn't really have a place here anymore. I don't know why that was inviable. It's going back down to below average. Uh, but Modern Warfare MP5, competitive for sure. Uh, great SMG choice. This is probably my second SMG choice behind the MAC-10 with a Bullfrog being the third right now in the current meta. But with the MAC-10 as it is, you don't really have a need to try and run these unless you're just trying to spice up your gameplay. Pila, garbage. Bison, garbage. The TTK on the Bison is just not good. Uh, in Modern Warfare Multiplayer, I love the Bison. It was one of my favorite weapons in the game because you could just get like five-man feeds, six-man feeds like no tomorrow because of the ammo count. But in Warzone against armor, not going to do anything. Uh, pretty much no range whatsoever. Its only benefit is the fact that it has that larger mag. Uh, but that's not enough to make it a competitive weapon in my mind. Uh, then we get to the ARs here. This is definitely a very diverse category. You got a lot of good. You got a decent amount of bad. The Krig, some people really like the Krig. I think it's a bit overrated. I'm going viable on this one. You could maybe make an argument for competitive, but it's not for me. The Farah, the Farah, however you say it, I'm going below average. The thing is decent up close, but everything this thing can do, the Groza can do better, and everything the Groza can do, the FFAR can do better. So, uh, not really a big fan of the Farah. Not to mention, its iron sights are just whack. Not a fan of those whatsoever. The XM4 as of late has gotten a lot better. Um, I'm actually, I think we're gonna do a video on this one pretty soon, comparing it to the M4A1 once again, because it definitely increased in uh, efficiency once they fixed the barrels for it. It went from having no good barrels to being actually not bad. I don't know if it's in that competitive ranking yet, though. The FFAR, I mean, we know where this one's going. Right at the very, very top. Thing's an absolute beast. Best close range, best medium range weapon in the game right now, I would say. Uh, QBZ, it doesn't hit hard enough for me, personally. Again, I think people say that this one is viable. In my book, it's below average just because that TTK isn't there, that damage isn't there. It's got the recoil, it's got the speed to be decent, but when it, when it comes to actual gunfights, you're not going to win. XM4 is going to outgun it. I'd say a P90 could outgun it up close. Like the QBZ, it's not a weapon I'd recommend. It's too close range based right now with the fact that it just doesn't hit hard enough. Uh, the Groza, I would say, is viable. Again, though, the FFAR is better than it, and I would probably take some of these weapons over it. The recoil is pretty good on it. Uh, the range is decent, but like I said, FFAR is just better, so I don't, I don't see it being much higher than viable. Maybe competitive at the very bottom of the competitive list when you're comparing all these weapons, but uh, not any higher than that. AK-47, uh, both of these really aren't it right now, Modern Warfare and Cold War. The Cold War one is decent, again, because, again, the uh, the barrels got fixed. So that and the XM4 were the ones that had all the big issues with the barrels, and now they're both fixed, so they're both uh, viable again. I, I think it sits there with the XM4. I don't think it's in that competitive category yet. Uh, the recoil, obviously, is not going to be fantastic, and we can, uh, we can go ahead and do the same thing for the other AK-47. Usable to a certain extent, but it's going to get held back because the uh, the slower speed and obviously the uh, the much more noticeable recoil in gunfights. The scar hits like a truck. The thing can absolutely melt, but the fact that it has such a small magazine and not super ideal recoil really hurts it. You got to do so much on the attachments to make this gun even semi-usable that I don't think it's worth the hassle. And much like the uh, the Uzi, it doesn't have the magazine capacity to compete beyond even duos. That's a struggle. Two kills max with this thing. And if they have self, if they have reses or you're getting third party, you don't stand a chance. You're going to have to reload too much. Uh, not a fan of the Scar whatsoever. The Ram's competitive for sure. I don't know if it's top tier meta, but it's definitely really, really good. The TTK on this thing is insane over all ranges. The recoil, I think, is like... I don't know what the right word for, but people think it's more than it is. I don't think the recoil is that bad on the RAM. If you learn the pattern, I mean, you're golden. It's really not a bad weapon whatsoever. Definitely in the competitive category. 
Uh, Joker's niche because you can actually use this to clear rooftops pretty well. Uh, if you get it in the right situation, I wouldn't run it on a loadout. I wouldn't recommend that. But if you are able to get it out of a chest or off a body and you're in downtown and they're camping on top of the uh, the glass skyscraper, you can clear people off that potentially. Uh, it's, a, it's a good anti-camper weapon, we could say, but you're not getting anything else out of it there. M4A1, I'm saying is competitive. I love the M4A1 from Modern Warfare. No recoil, uh, really good range, good mobility. Like it's got a plus in every single category and really no cons. So I'm a fan. I'm saying it's competitive, not top tier meta though. FR556 is garbage, man. I, I can't stand this gun. The burst is slow. The damage is weak. It doesn't even have a great spread. Like the M16 and the AUG are, are what this gun wishes it could be. The FR556 is not it. The Odin, it could almost sit in niche, honestly. I don't think it's below average. It's in viable or niche. I guess we'll go viable because niche is kind of a weird category with the other weapons. Again, solos, duos is where this weapon's gonna thrive. In quads, you're not gonna get enough out of it, I would say, to really compete just because it doesn't have the ammo to squad wipe. However, I mean, if you hit every shot, you're gonna knock players left, right, and center. The damage on this thing is absurd, uh, but it's not competing with these other weapons. These weapons are just too dominant comparatively. So I feel like, again, viable is where that one has to sit. M13, I'm going viable. Personally, I feel like it's weak. It has that range, but only in those really long range gunfights where you're not gonna always wanna be using a rifle. It's gonna be harder to hit those shots. The recoil, obviously, is super easy to control. No recoil whatsoever. It's a beam in that regard, but its damage is not where I want it to be to argue competitive. It's definitely not top tier meta. If you're arguing for competitive, you're probably arguing because it has that range over some of the other rifles. But the fact that it's TTK isn't gonna be better than other rifles in those close to medium range fights knocks it down a bracket for me. It's definitely decent, but there's quite a few weapons I'd take instead of that. It was good before, but with the Cold War meta now and, and those weapons being added in, I feel like it's definitely not where it once was. Kilo is viable. The TTK obviously is not what it once was either. Sort of the same situation. This was the best gun in the game. Everyone was using the Kilo back in season five, season six. But it got that damage drop off nerf. And now at times it feels like it's a pea shooter. It's still super easy to use. Like the ease of use is definitely, it's definitely great. So it's not a bad weapon whatsoever, but I don't want to say it's competitive anymore. Again, these are all weapons that I prefer over that in the right situation. So uh, I can't say it's really above viable or average. The Grau is in the same place. Let me tell you, the Grau is my baby. I love the Grau. The second, what, season two is when the Grau came out? The Grau was, uh, the Grau and the Striker was season two. The second it dropped in multiplayer, I said it was a fantastic weapon. The moment Warzone dropped, I was using the Growl from the get-go. And of course, this was the meta for quite some time. Everyone was using the Growl. I love this weapon, but it got the nerfs along the way. And now it's good. Like This is what I use on my fully loaded class because it doesn't have any recoil. It's got the best iron sights in the game, but it's damage. It's range aren't really competitive, I would say anymore. It's usable but you're gonna get outgunned if they have a, one of these weapons. If they have an AUG, you're gonna get beamed. If they have a PKM or a Bruin, you're probably gonna get beamed. Up close, it can't compete with the Bullfrog, the MP5, so I feel like Viable is a decent place for that one too. AN94, I feel like this is such like a bland and uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? This is such a cliche category, but I mean like these weapons aren't awful, but, but they're not great either. So this kind of has to be where I place them. Again, if we had like an above average, this would probably be split up a little bit more, but this is what we're working with today. Amax, again, we already know where this one's going top tier. One of the best rifles in the game. The range is insane. The damage is insane. Much like the Ram, people say it's got bad recoil. I don't think it's really that bad. You can learn the pattern. If you mount with this thing, it has no recoil whatsoever. It's a fantastic weapon. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't been nerfed. Uh, the FAL... It could be competitive. It really could be, but the, the semi-auto, I feel like really knocks down that ease of use. It did get nerfed a while back. Obviously, this was another weapon that was completely breaking the game at one point. Viable, though, I feel like is an appropriate place. It'd probably be above average if we had that category because its TTK at all ranges is really good. But the fact of the matter is you have to land your shots. It's a semi-auto weapon, so the skill gap is there. That knocks it down to viable for me. Uh, the RPG again, where's the first one? It's gonna be in the same place. Both RPGs function the same. The AS Val could almost be niche as well. If it's not niche, again, it's viable. It's not competitive because it doesn't have ammo. Even in solos, if you knock somebody, you're going to have to reload by the time you, you clean them up if they have self-revive. Um, and you're not going to be able to fight two players at once with the AS Val. But its damage is also insane up close. I almost want to go niche on this one just to spice things up a bit because close range, the AS Val might be the best gun in the game but everywhere else, it's really not that usable. And then finally, we've got the other 1911, and we dropped the other one to 
Did we drop it out of viable? Uh, there it is. Okay. So yeah, and 1911 is both the same gun pretty much again, below average. And uh, that's all the guns that we've got here. So the top tier meta right now currently dominated by the car when it comes to sniping. This is a secondary on a lot of loadouts. The AUG, absolutely insane. The M16, I guess, can have a place here. It's it's definitely on the verge of competitive and top tier meta. MAC-10, very obvious choice. FFAR, very obvious choice. Same deal with the AMAX. This is a pretty good category. Obviously, the Diamati is only here because it is the best pistol. Uh, it, this could very easily be viable too. Uh, but in the pistol category, it's definitely the king. Tundra is great. SPR is great. These are all weapons that if I end up getting them off of somebody else's body, off of somebody else's loot, I'm okay with it. Obviously, I'd prefer these weapons, but these are all very usable. The MP5 could be on a lot of loadouts. Same with the SPR if you're not really a fan of the car. Stoner is a great LMG. Like These are all great. Uh, viable. I feel like this is... It's a very packed category, obviously. Some of these shotguns could maybe be below average because they're so range dependent, but for the most part, this is a very diverse category. You got a lot of different options here. Some snipers, uh, some close range variants, some medium range variants. You got a lot going on here. These are weapons for the most part that I'd recommend avoiding. I wouldn't go out of my way to ever use any of these guns. This is pretty much the same deal, but if you're just trying to have fun in Warzone, these are weapons that offer the opportunity for that. Obviously, the riot shield is very fun to mess around with. The crossbow is the same deal. Others are just super good in very, very specific situations. And then you got the uh, the garbage tier, the hot trash tier. Not much needs to be said about these. Weapons that cannot compete, weapons that probably will never compete. They're slow, they're awkward to use, they're just not it. So yeah, that is every single weapon in Warzone that we currently have ranked, and that's gonna wrap things up for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new to the channel and you wanna stay up to date with everything going on in COD, from news to intel to updates and everything else in between. This is the place to be, so feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. And as always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL on all SCUF, G Fuel, and Control Freak products. The links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.